Hello, welcome to A Layman Looks at the Word with Hal Richardson. We're continuing our study of the New Jerusalem. This is lesson three in the series. Last time we learned several attributes of the New Jerusalem. Uh, it's four square with a great high wall that uh, the waters of life flow from the thrones inside of God the Father and God the Son, that it has 12 gates with an angel at each gate guarding it, and each gate has precious stones, similar to the stones in the high priest's breastplate, each representing a member of the tribes of Israel. So in Revelation 21, 14, and the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the name of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. So we see here that the foundations of the city are named for the apostles. This is only fitting as they're the ones who spread the gospel of Jesus around the world. Verse 15, And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth, and he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. Some have suggested that the New Jerusalem is a sphere which would have the same height, width, and length. And here's a picture of uh, the New Jerusalem as a sphere by Schorschner. Others say that it's a perfect cube, which would be similar to the Holy of Holies, with 12,000 furlongs being a number of divine government. The cube version is usually shown as a golden cube, because it does talk about the gold, which we'll get into a little more later. But it does fit the description of having the same height, width, and depth. Some even say that the New Jerusalem has been seen in deep space by the Hubble telescope. And this is one of the better pictures that I've found of people that claim that. Well, here's what I was shown by the Lord. 12,000 furlongs is 1,500 miles. That's because a furlong is an eighth of a mile. The height measurement of the New Jerusalem is from the center courtyard to the top of the walls. The walls are 900 miles above ground level. The foundations extend into the earth for 600 miles in 50 mile steps which is 50 miles high and 50 miles wide that resemble an upside down pyramid with the courtyard at the center. In space and in flight, whether interdimensional or whatever, it will probably have shields on the top and look something like this. When the New Jerusalem comes down from heaven, it will go partially into the earth. So here's a side view of the walls and the foundations showing the height and depth is 1500 miles. Remember the walls are natural rock that John describes as jasper clear as crystal looking from the outside and they ascend for 900 miles above the ground level. We'll see later that inside is, is gold. Here's what the top view would look like looking downward with the 50 mile wide and deep 12 foundations with the courtyard at the very center. This is how it would be visualized from the side, actually inside the earth, 
but you wouldn't be able to see over the walls. The displacement of the earth and the stone and whatever God determines will also be counterbalanced on the other side of the planet to keep the spin constant and true. The courtyard will contain God's palace and probably other buildings like the assembly hall and the central station, but it also has the thrones of the Lord. The thrones of the Lord, which is Jehovah and Jesus, and of course the Holy Spirit proceeding from there, the rivers of life flow from them. And on the each side of the rivers are the trees of life. And we'll talk more about that as we get to that. The courtyard area is 90,000 square miles. The new atmosphere, when we talked about it, was heaven, is now going to be a thousand miles deep. This is ten times what our atmosphere is now. This means that the top of the walls of the New Jerusalem will still be in the atmosphere. This is similar to how the canopy was before the great flood of Noah, when men lived more than 900 years. Now they're going to live forever. The blue sky will be a darker blue, just like Jesus' color as is in the Talit in Numbers 15.38. When the Lord was telling me about the new atmosphere, he said that very few comets or asteroids would make it through this large atmosphere to harm the earth. Revelation 21.17 and he measured the wall there of 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. One hundred and forty-four cubits is two hundred and forty-six feet. This is the thickness of the walls. The dwellings are in the walls and they are 246 feet square, or 60,516 square feet, or 1.4 acres. Jesus said that in my Father's house are many mansions. Well, if you measure that in the walls, there are 12,165,120,000 dwellings in the walls. These are for the immortals, and there are special floors also for angels. Throughout history, people have lived in the walls of a city, but there's not going to be anything that we've ever seen that's as nice as what God is preparing for us. Here's some dwellings and walls in Jordan and in Petra and also in Jericho. Continuing in Revelation 2018, and the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. So when John's talking here from the outside. The natural walls look like jasper with clear coat on it. But from the inside, they look like translucent gold. This translucent gold is not known on the earth. All of the streets and any buildings that are along them are also made of gold. Remember that this city is for the bride of Christ to live in, which we are. And it's all about Jesus and the place he's built for us to spend eternity with him. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ today as your Savior, ask him into your life. This is Hal Richardson. Join me next time. We'll continue.
with the New Jerusalem. Bye for now.